Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestle Horror. Greetings, viewers and listeners. Meet Hook Jim here, along with my co-host Donnie Hoover. Donnie, what is going on? Oh man, that's a lot going on. It's been crazy, busy, busy, busy. <laughs> it has. I'll tell you what, we are the Wrestle Horror Podcast, and this episode we're going to talk a little bit on the haunt side of things, and this whole COVID nineteen. What? I mean, are haunts going to open? Aren't haunts going to open? What kind of contingencies are in place? Donnie and I have been talking about this. We've uh, I've talked to other haunt owners on my other podcast. A lot of craziness is going on. That's the only way I can say it right now. There's a lot of uncertainty. What do you think, Donnie? Uh, yeah, I totally agree. And I, yeah, so I know we've talked about this COVID stuff on many occasions, and it's mainly been directed toward wrestling, you know, and especially with like New Ohio Wrestling, where we got canceled by the Arnold, canceled by the fair. Uh, I was just actually on the uh, Ohio Athletic Commission call this past Tuesday and, uh, you know, to get an update on when they were going to reopen you know, contact sports and contact uh, entertainment and stuff, and they still don't have an answer. So um, as of right now, you know, professional wrestling isn't even allowed in Ohio at this moment. So that's, you know, that brings the big concerns up for the haunt industry too. You know, all the major conventions have canceled and uh, you know, haunt conventions and everything is canceled. So, um, yeah, so this week we're still, we're going to continue talking about some of the COVID stuff, but it's going to be directed strictly for the haunt industry which is, uh, you know, just basically, you know, it's going to be here quicker than we realize. It's just right around the corner pretty much. It, it is. This time of year, haunt owners are usually scrambling to get set up. And with this COVID situation, a whole new wrench has been thrown into the works. I mean, mm-hmm. here, here we are in June. This is, this is really crunch time for a lot of haunts. But – with these restrictions in place, uh, things have to be changed. If haunt owners are going to open, radical changes have to be made. And, and one of the big things is in a haunt, people get in your face. Uh-huh. And that's going to be very difficult to do with the COVID restrictions that are in place right now. Because, you know, me being a, a haunt actor in the past, I mean, nothing tickled me more than just get up in somebody's face and scare the shit out of them. Right, yeah, standing right beside them. Right, but it's kind of hard to do that from six feet away. Mm -hmm. So so how do you do that? I mean, there's been haunts out there uh, that have have come up with unique ideas to do that. Some haunts are rerouting the way their haunts run. Um, But... You know, this this is going to be hard, not just only for the haunt owners, but the haunt actors as well, because they it's ingrained to them, a lot of them just get in their face, especially queue line actors. Mm-hmm. One thing that bothers me about this whole thing is there's going to be a distinct lack of queue line actors this season, I believe, because of these restrictions. What do you think? Yeah, I completely agree. I, I think this is going to be the year where – you know, if they're if the attractions are even even allowed to open, uh, they're going to have to be creative. You know, just a couple of quick examples, like you said, the queue line. You know, instead of the actors being out there in their face, you know, you know, walking through the crowd, getting people, you know, tell them the story of the haunt. You know, they're going to have to come up with different ways. You know, of maybe video. You know, have television screens set up with the stories and stuff. You know. Um, and, and even I was actually, I was just thinking about this the other day, um, you know, if, instead of like, if you're going through a haunt and you got the, the creepers that follow up behind you and, and stuff like that. And the ones that jump out at you and get right close to you and stuff, you know, they're going to have to, you know, modify those as well. And I mean, you may even see haunts that are basically just scenes only to where they have the scenes with the plexiglass, you know, blocking to where the actors and the patrons don't touch, you know. And it'll be a lot of the actors in the scenes, you know, doing doing scare uh, scares and with different actors, you know, or just them jumping out and slamming into the plexiglass or something, you know. It's, it's, I was just thinking, you know, it's going to be hard. People are going to have to modify what they're doing. See, and that's just it. Um, 
how do you scare somebody from six feet away? I mean, right. You you you'll get the creep factor going in, but you can't get in there and and, and break that bubble to where they really get freaked out. And that's the that's going to be one of the toughest hurdles for these haunts mm-hmm. is to keep people the six feet away. Now, on the opposite side of the coin, I think masks will become very prevalent as opposed to makeup this year because of. Uh-huh. You know, the COVID restrictions, the masks will help. Yep. Uh, but what do you do? I mean, there's so many uns- there's so many variables out there. It depends on state to state. It depends on, you know, municipality to municipality as to what their full rules are. And one thing we, you and I had discussed and um, this is uh, something that we did on the Big Scary Show, our last episode. Uh, the Fear Factory out in Salt Lake City has created a, what is it, a 30-page? That's a 60-page. It's a 60-page. Okay, it's grown up. 60-page uh-huh. contingency plan to work in the current COVID environment. Yep. Yeah, this uh, is version 6.0, it looks like. <laughs> so they've been updating it. <laughs> You know, we talked to these guys last week on Big Scary Show, and uh, Spencer Terry and uh, Heidi and Rob, uh, they've uh, they've really done their homework, um, and their actors were on board. And one thing that I know they told us they did was they had to reroute the path of their haunt to where actors could not get within six feet of the patrons because they had the halfway to Halloween show. Uh, but they did it in a unique way because actors actually came became the distractions and the scares came in the form of an air cannon, uh, a horn, things like that. The actors would distract, they'd hit the hit a, a hidden button, and boom, they were still getting a scare, which I thought was a very unique way to do it. Um, is it the ideal way to do it? No, but they got nothing but great reviews from the people that went through. They sold out um, immediately, and they had sold out for Saturday night as well, unfortunately, due to the protests that were going on on the Saturday night. They had to shut down because protests were too close to where their location was. But they did get a solid Friday out. And they, they have taken this contingency plan and shared it with the haunt community for free. Mm-hmm. Yep. I thought that was great. A great idea. It is. I, I, I mean, there's a lot of haunt owners that I think if they don't already have this, they should have this. Mm-hmm. Because if you're going to open, you've got to make changes. You just can't do what you normally do. Right. Yeah. And one of the things I wanted to dig deeper on that you'd mentioned is uh, this way. And I also had thought of this as well as, as like we said, the actors and humans can't get close this year, we're going to assume. And uh, so it's going to rely more on, like you said, the air cannons and, uh, and even props, you know, mechanical props, you know, the humans, you know, the human actors can't get close to you, but it's not to say that a mechanical prop can't come out and get close to you and get that scare as well. But then that'll bring on the other aspect of, you know, you're going to have to have somebody hiding in the shadows in case one of those, you know, customers touches the prop, then they, you know, the person in the shadows has to be there to wipe that prop down again real quick before the next group comes through. And, uh, but yeah, I, I think, I think it's going to highly depend on, like you said, the air cannons, the, the big noises, the mechanical props and stuff like that, the hydraulics, you know, that kind of thing. Right. It's kind of like a reverse of what it used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whereas these types of things were distractions, now they're becoming the scares. Right. And you got to watch out for those mechanical props. You never know when, when, when one's going to go crazy and take somebody's head off. No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that just adds to the, the scare of it. Well, yeah, 
Hey, and, that's realistic. Somebody's head. Right. Yeah, just I mean, even like for me, you know, my favorite thing is drop panels. You know, I I, I enjoy being in drop panels, and you know that's even going to have to be modified this year because yeah, you can still drop the panel down, but you can't come out the, come out of the window at the people. You're going to have to, you know, stay back, or there's going to have to be like a plexiglass block right. in place. So it's just, you know, it, it's going to be a lot of modifications this year. And, and you know, it, it's going to be inconvenient for a lot of people, but it could be a good thing because, it, you know, somebody could discover an, a new and better way to do something because of it, you know. You know who knows what's going to happen. Yep, that's true. Well, I had somebody here, uh, my wife, come on. Uh -huh. The queen of the my darkness. My wife's here. See, say hi to Chris. <laughs> And she was, uh, she was trying to tell me so. She was trying to tell me something about something that happened to her in spirit once. What was that? That was a prop that I was showing a little, a little old lady. She was looking for something for her home haunt, and she this was a, a peekaboo penny prop where the if you step on the step pad, it would go. Um, it had its hands in front of its face, and then when it said peekaboo, the head would pop up. Well, she loved it, except for the fact that when the head popped up, it kept on going. And uh, the <laughs> head just flew across the store, and she fell back, and another customer caught her just before she hit the floor, but she was screaming so badly, I thought she was going to have a heart attack. And, of course, I'm on that, that about hitting the floor laughing so hard, because mm. that was the perfect prop. Right. Uh, I thought... <laughs> Oh my God, if the head flew off, what a scare, right? Um, except you'd have to have somebody there every time to put the head back on. Back on, yeah. Have it hooked to a safety chain or something so don't go too far away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and the funny thing is, we still have that head. Yep, I kept the head out of posterity. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Just my input. <laughs> there you go. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, props, you know, doing stuff they're not supposed to, you know. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> that's a that was a funny story. I'd forgotten about that. I'm glad I'm glad she came up here. Uh she came up and told me something and heard us talking about that. So that right. <laughs> yeah, it's something to consider because like we you know, like we were saying, I'm 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 assuming props and animatronics and and stuff like that they're going to be you know more of a factor this year than before previous years no they're going to have to be um uh -huh. you know I, other than that i just don't know how you can how you can beat the six feet yeah that, that's that's what i was saying i was actually because we're we're in ohio which is where our you know our haunts are based out of and i was actually looking on the uh ohio uh department of health website mm -hmm. And it's got it up here where they're saying the mandatory thing for employees is six feet, you know, which is pretty much standard at this point in time. So, I mean, you know, you're not going to have any actors, you know, in the same rooms together anymore. Right. And if you are, they're going to be, you know, one corner and, you know, one on the other corner, which isn't going to be very effective. Right. Um, you know, it's saying that uh, they're going to have all your know, facial coverings, which goes back to where you, you're, you're uh, predicting that mask will be more prominent this year, which I agree. And, uh, and, and that's going to make it even hotter for the, you know, for the staff. So that's going to be, you know, a challenge in itself because you're going to have the mask, but you also have to have a covering over your, your nose and mouth, I would assume. So you can't get, you know, stuff on people. Right. Um, yeah. You know, they're going to have to do the, the take your temperature, you know, regular hand washing. Um, mm -hmm. They're saying they got to place hand sanitizers in high contact locations, which here's a question. I, I mean, I totally get that, but do you think that would make uh, a haunt less effective if you, cause you, a haunt that uses scents, like if you go into a butcher room and it smells like rotten meat a little bit, but now you go in there and all you smell is like hand sanitizer and, and sanitizing wipes. I mean, do you think that would take away from the effectiveness of some scenes? Well, you know, that depends because there is hand sanitizer that is unscented. Odorless. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, and then, uh, you know, places like, uh, you know, along that line, 
you know, Froggy's Fog. Everybody in the haunt industry knows Froggy's Fog. Uh-huh. They have been creating sanitizer for weeks now. Um, yep. Instead of, you know, and, but they still have fog. If they could work the two in, there you go. Right. Like a sanitizing fog. That'd be amazing. <laughs> right. But, um, you know, some of the scents, you know, they might be overpowered because, you know, even unscented hand sanitizer does have the smell of alcohol. Uh-huh. Um, that's going to be a tough one, to be honest with you. I, I don't know how that's going to, I really would like to, if anybody's listening that has some haunt owners that are facing these problems, please reach out to us. Um, what's the email again? I forget. It's wrestlehorror at gmail.com. As simple as that. Uh-huh. Wrestlehorror at gmail.com. Reach out to us. I'd, we would love to talk to some haunt owners about these type of contingencies and, and how they feel about it. Yeah. So, and, and here's another one that I was uh, looking at too, and wondering how they're going to do it. That, um, yeah, the high touch items, you know, stuff like that. They want them cleaned on a regular basis. Yeah, you know, when yeah. people go through haunt, especially even me, you know, haunts are dark. First thing you do, you got your hands out, you're touching walls, you're touching corners, you know, you're feeling props, working your way through the, through the, the, trail of the haunt or path of the haunt so i mean how are you going to be able to do that i mean you can't just have somebody behind people like wiping walls down as they go and wiping props down and then if you do have to have people there to clean and sanitize on certain you know random times that's going to add to your employee cost you know your budget for your employees because right. you're going to have to have your actors as normal now you're going to have to have you know people dressed in all black that can't be seen going around wiping stuff down you know all night long so I mean, that's just stuff to consider. You know, it's gonna it's gonna be a different game this year. I'm I'm thinking <laughs> so. it's gonna be very interesting this year. That's to say the least. Um, mm-hmm. As far as yeah, you know, they might go to a, a instead of completely dark, they might go to a low level lighting so people can at least see their way through without having to reach out and touch things. All right. Um, but. In the case where they've got to wipe things down, yeah, I mean, uh, Salt Lake City, a fear factory out there, they they made the plan for that, too. They hired extra people to do certain – they were cleaning the bathrooms after every use. Mm-hmm. Every use. They would have somebody go down there and sanitize it. Yep. And that's what I said, that's just going to increase the, you know, they're already going to, the numbers are already going to be low, I'm predicting, because of the spacing. So right. that's going to increase their budget by having those extra people in there just specifically just to clean and sanitize. Well, it's going to be a very, very hard year for the haunts that do open. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, t- speaking about that, you know, you, Donnie, you sent me a couple of links before we got started. Uh, and I'm looking at uh, uh, the Fear Fair uh, link you sent me. And my buddy Brett Hayes, he runs Fear Fair out there in Seymour, Indiana. Um, I've known Brett for a few years, and he's got a whole page um, here where it's got the COVID-19 measures. And, I mean, the first question is, uh, will Fear Fair be open this year? Yeah. Um, and obviously that's a pretty – frequently asked question and he says we they plan to open um but for the health and safety of their guests uh we're we're, they're working and monitoring on the situation to to make things safe for everybody um and sanitizing all areas of the haunted house at least hourly during operation and even more thoroughly before opening the next night Uh checking temperature of all staff to screen out Anyone, anyone that's symptomatic, removing any cloth or other surfaces that guests would have to push their way through or otherwise come into contact with, including squeeze tunnels or, um, what's the name for them? Um, God, I know this too. Um, uh, you know what I'm talking about? It's a big huh. airbags, and you go through yeah. it. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, when I worked, when I worked at the Denton schoolhouse, we used to call it the vagina. 
you had to squeeze yourself through it. Right. Yeah, and that's another thing. A lot of a lot of scenes and stuff has cloth and you know hanging and and materials, you know, dangling and and uh, yeah. So that's going to be uh, like I said, people are going to have to change their scenes and everything. It's you know it's going to be rough. Well, see, it says right here that Brett says they're going to use only alcohol-based makeup, mm -hmm. which is a good idea. It's expensive, but it's a good idea. Uh, and thoroughly sanitizing airbrushes. Airbrushes, you know, no contact. So there will, uh, you know, there will be makeup. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I mean, if they're doing airbrush, couldn't they just put on a plain white mask and then just airbrush over the mask? Um, they could do that. And it'll kind of blend in until they start moving the mask around or whatever. But <laughs> well, It all depends on and if they have to be vocal and things like that. I mean. Yeah, true. Um, and they're going to thoroughly clean and sanitize costumes and masks. And they're mm -hmm. going to keep the same actors in the same roles as much as possible. Uh, and right. he asked about, then there's a question about, uh, you know, PPE, personal protective equipment. Um. Will people be able to wear it? And you got to watch out for that because people might try to get weird and mm -hmm. some kind of mass that doesn't see. But you know, yeah. he says right now it's too soon to tell. Too soon to tell. Um, and he's going to wait what officials see in the fall. Say in the fall. But you know, Fear Fair plans on opening, and you know, I got to commend Brett um, for, for for these type of measures um, and. Some of the, you know, larger haunts like, you know, Fear Fair, maybe, um, I haven't heard anything from Dent, but I'm sure the Dent Schoolhouse will be in some way, shape, or form opening. Uh -huh. um, I'm sure Bud and crew have, have been closely monitoring this as well. Uh, what, what concerns me, not so much of the big haunts, it's the smaller haunts that can't afford all this extra stuff. What's right. going to happen to them? Yeah, yeah, like the yeah. lower, the lower income, lower level type haunts that are, you know, yeah, they don't have that big budget to go off of. Right, or you know, somebody's yard or home haunt they've been doing, you know, for twenty years because they love it, uh -huh. not because they're necessarily making money, but now with all these things in place, you know, they can't afford to open. Right. Yeah, and, and another question, speaking of like not being able to afford to open and, and the income possibilities, I'm looking on the, uh, like I said, back on the Ohio site, and they're saying that the customers have to insure, we have to insure uh, a minimum of six feet between customers. Right. And uh, so that, now is that saying like a group per group, or does everybody have to go through by themselves six feet spaced out? Well, I mean, you now, know, as soon as they get in that, if that's the case, as soon as that group gets into the haunt, they're all going to be stopping and waiting for everybody. You know what I mean? Right. I think, um, you know, based on what I understood with the Fear Factory, you know, if a group orders, I mean, if a group of people order tickets, that group of people will go in together. Uh -huh. I mean, it would be people that, are familiar with each other, family members, close friends that have been in close contact. Right. Um, I, I think that's the way that's going to work. I mean, you know, if some one random person shows up by themselves, yep, they they should go through by themselves. Right. Yep. Um. You know, and that's another thing. Ticketing, it, it, it's a thing as well. Um. Again, uh -huh. uh, the Fear Factory. Did completely all online ticketing, non-contact, et cetera, et cetera. You know, limited. I mean, it was all arranged, pre-arranged, so that there was no contact, and they had their phone or their piece of paper saying, you know, here's my ticket. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that's another thing to consider with all these haunts. Um, you know, cash cards contact you know your hands on your cards your hands on your cash right yeah you know what's next i mean yeah i like the online agree or uh sales um only i, I kind of agree with that well and i do too i i do too as well 
Um, there are some people that just like to show up and pay cash, but right. not this year, I don't think. I mean, it's not going to be that easy. And it's, it's, I can promise you, well, I can't promise you, I, I shouldn't say that, but in my opinion, that's a better way to put it. Yeah. Um, that um, this year, big or small haunt, if you're open, I think numbers are going to be down. And it's going to be tough. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like with queue lines for the bigger haunts, like here in Ohio, um, right. you know, like 13th floor and, and carnage and, and haunted hoochie. I mean, especially haunted hoochie, they have thousands and thousands of people waiting in their queue line at any oh, given yeah. night during the haunt season. And if you have to spread all them people out six feet apart, you know, that's going to be all, they'll be clear down Broad Street. You know? right, <laughs> It'll be virtually right. impossible to do that. So, I mean, with time ticketing, do you think be an option where you know, you, you, you're you scheduled to go through the haunt at this time? So be there, or, you know, yeah. at that time. Yeah. And then that way it might cut down on the crowd. I think time ticketing is perfect. And again, um, I, I, I go back to Salt Lake City Fear Factory because, these guys uh, spearheaded this thing. Um, they did time ticketing as well. And I, I think it's the best way to do it for the least amount of contact. Uh, and it's going to be hard for places. Even, I mean, even time ticketing is going to be hard for places like the Haunted Uchi, Dent Schoolhouse, USS Nightmare. I, I'm just throwing random haunts out there that I'm familiar with in the area. Uh -huh. You know, I um, there's a haunt that uh, that my uh, former uh, haunt team mall used to work at for six years. Unfortunately, um, they did not get rehired for this year, and you know, um, uh, there were a lot of variables. Variables, but even if those variables had not come into play, the COVID would have killed that anyway i mean uh -huh. yep so i feel for these owners i do uh, i i've got a friend of mine out in waverly ohio that does a haunt and he's still moving forward uh, and i need to reach out to him actually we've had him on the show his name's alan shell uh -huh. um, yep. and backwards oddities yep uh -huh. uh, i'm gonna reach out to him and see what's going on i've been following and watching this, doing, they're starting their build and everything, and and creating new rooms. So, I'm sure he's got contingencies in place too. Right. Um. So, you know, I saw a meme the other day, and they had, uh, um, it was a Back to the Future meme, and it had Doc Brown sitting in the DeLorean, Marty standing next to him, next to him, and it says, "2020, never go there." <laughs> that's about right <laughs> uh and then, you know this year is just uh, i think a lot of us would just like to skip and go to 2021 uh -huh. just do a um, reboot <laughs> or something because this has just been a crazy year i mean yep. not not only with the covid but with all these i mean protests uh -huh. you know and and the riots and things it's just nuts yep it's been a wild year for sure Ugh. eye opening <laughs> but the big thing is the covid and uh -huh. you know i even had a scare uh not me personally but my brother um texted me um yesterday uh -huh. morning and told me he says i've been self-quarantining for the past few days because i've got flu-like symptoms he says but i did put in for my covid test um, so me and my dad were kind of, you know, on pins and needles. Uh -huh. And uh, finally, about one or two o'clock yesterday, he texted me and says, I got my results back. I am negative. Good, good. But, you know, that was kind of scary because, you know, flu-like flu -like symptoms is like, oh, shit. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was like, here it comes. <laughs> you know, and my brother's in good shape. Uh, he's, you know, he's. He's 52 years old, but he's in good shape. Uh -huh. um, so I, I figured if anybody could beat it, he could because he, he's been a paramedic and all kinds of stuff. All right. Yeah. But but I'm glad he doesn't have it. I mean. Oh yeah, for sure. 
There's been people that I've I've heard of and friends that I've heard of that I had a friend of mine and I probably mentioned this on a previous show, a friend of mine that lives in New York whose dad uh, died from the COVID. Mm-hmm. Not good at all. No. Um, and as a matter of fact, this friend was big in the haunt industry. He makes he makes great static props uh, for the industry that are that are pretty well known. I'm not going to mention right. You know, out of respect to him, but uh, it was uh, uh, that was pretty. Uh, you know, it reached out and uh, it touched a lot of the haunt industry uh, that that happened. Uh-huh. Uh, but you know, getting back to the current day to day situation, yeah, you know, and that's just it. It changes from day to day to day. Right. Yeah. And here's something that we've not even touched on and and even considered. And I don't even think we actually even touched on it when we were talking about COVID with the wrestling industry is, uh, and you would know more about this than I did because, you know, this is the haunt industry is your bread and butter. Um, But how important is concessions and stuff like that for the haunt industry? Uh, Because I know in wrestling concessions is a major source of income. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big part of, you know, the wrestling you know, event, but, um, how much is, uh, concessions an important part of haunting? Is there a lot of that? And, uh, would it hurt bad if they weren't allowed to do the concessions? Um, I, in most cases, um, concessions, you know, they're a little bit of extra money for the haunts in my opinion. Um, the problem isn't necessarily food or drink. Uh-huh. The problem is merchandise. Right. Um, can you still sell merchandise? Uh, food and drink, I think people can get over. I mean, you know, when I worked at Dent, they had a, you know, a, a, me- a menu, uh, the food, the walking tacos, hot dogs, things like that. Uh-huh. Um, Drinks are, drinks are big. I mean, I think drinks are the, probably the biggest thing because people get, uh, especially if you're in a long queue line, people get tired, they get cranky, they get thirsty. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so I don't think concessions is as big a deal as merchandise is. Okay. That's, again, my opinion. If somebody has a different opinion, love to hear from you. WrestleHorror yep. at gmail.com. For sure. Um, because yeah, I I don't know everything about the Han industry. I can't pretend I know everything about the Han industry, but I've been in it quite a while, and I've got some friends. But things change, mm-hmm. you know. So that's that's my take on that. Merch is going to be the thing. Yeah. And if you're going to a non-contact system. You can't walk up and pay twenty dollars for a T-shirt, right? Yeah. So maybe, yep. so maybe they just go to strictly online sales for the merch, which would be a more practical approach to it. Kind of like an upsell on their ticket purchase. You know, if you want a T-shirt, an additional fifteen bucks, ten bucks, twenty bucks, whatever. Right. Or, or you strictly do it online, and people can go buy them from your website. I mean, and then and you can ship yeah. it to them. Yep, that's true. You know, and you know, charge you know, charge a couple bucks for shipping, whatever, and um, here you go. Here's your T-shirt, or here's your. I, I've even seen thongs at the Dent Schoolhouse. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, Eddie, if you can put a logo on something, you can sell it. Uh-huh. You know. So uh, I mean, what do you? Th- What's your final takes on all this, Donnie? It's just been... Uh, Yeah, like I said, I've been just kind of sitting back and reading things as they come across, you know, like you have and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be... This is going to be a different haunt season, I'm I'm thinking, than any we've ever seen. You know, because like you said, you know, there's not going to be that personal in-your-face, you know, stuff unless they can... uh, Unless they can find a way to... uh, cover their you know mouth and nose 
and then still, you know, they got their hands and all that. So, I mean, it's just going to be, and, and like I said, I envision, you know, going through haunts with scenes that are covered by plexiglass to where there's no contact, you know, a block. And uh, even like drop panels, like I, it wouldn't surprise me if this season you see a drop panel drop down and there's a piece of shiny plexiglass right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's just going, it's going to be interesting and different. And, uh, I'm not looking for the, I don't, I don't expect the best outcomes for the haunt owners as in big turnouts and big profits and all that. I think this is going to be a, a year just to squeeze by and just try to keep the doors open kind of thing. But, um, you know, like I said, if everybody just keeps moving forward and doing what they do, you know, I'm sure it'll work itself out in the long run. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, as far as drop panels go, if the lighting's done right, you won't see the plexiglass. Right. <laughs> well, I say it. I just use that as an example because that's kind of like one of my favorite things to do. Um, but I mean, even like just regular scenes, you know, you're going to walk by and they're going to have to have some kind of cover, you know, or spacing or something. It's just right. it's not going to be the same, you know. Well, I'm definitely uh, I'm definitely going to try to get out to a couple of haunts this season, mm -hmm. uh, just just to see what they've done and how they're doing it uh out of if nothing out of if nothing more out of curiosity um i'm sure i will go out i can almost guarantee you that i will go out to waverly to my buddy alan shell's haunt mm -hmm. um which i like try to i try to do every year i think i've missed one or two but um, yes yeah, so i've never worked. been to that one so i'd like to go there myself yeah you have to come out there with me and he's mm -hmm. alan puts on a a good show. I mean, he's not one of the big dogs, but he he does a lot of engineering himself, and he comes up with some pretty unique ideas. So, cool. you, you know, we'll get together. We'll go out and see what uh, what he's doing this year, and maybe even see some mall people out there because mall will be out there at least one night. Nice. Um, but uh, definitely want to check out that, and then. And, uh, you know, I'd like to check out a couple of the bigger haunts, uh, maybe Dent or maybe head out to Fear Fair um, and, and see what they've done to, uh, you know, keep people happy. I mean, uh -huh. yep. it's, it's going to be different. Be prepared. Oh, yeah. Yep, for sure. I agree 100%. So with all that being said, we're still looking uh, – we're still looking at uh, anybody that wants to talk about this, any haunt owners, haunt managers, that type of person. Mm -hmm. If you want to talk about this and talk about contingencies and what your plans are, you know, without revealing too much, obviously, but, you know, how you're going to take care of the customers. Again, please reach out to us at uh, wrestlehorror at gmail.com. And uh, we'd love to talk to you on the show and, and get some more input as this situation keeps developing. Yep, for sure. Absolutely. So, uh, uh, Donnie, with that being said, uh, I think it's time to wrap this up. Uh -huh. uh, everybody stay safe. Follow the guidelines your best you can. Keep your fingers crossed. And uh, for those of you that are wrestling fans, um, email the Ohio Athletic Commission and say, hey, we really want to see this come back. You're opening amusement parks. Why can't wrestling be, you know, I mean, you go into Walmart and mm -hmm. you have more contact with people than. Yeah, and I think that's the, the, the hiccup is the contact part because all non-contact sports and all non-contact stuff are, are open. Just right. like we, we drove by one of the high schools here in town and they had a, a baseball tournament going on. And, you know, which is non-contact, but I think that's the, the main issue is the contact, you know, just like with wrestling, boxing, MMA, and sure. that's where they're, you know, and they're basically from what they told me on, on the, on the committee meeting I was sitting in on listening in on is that they're basically uh, their hands are tied until, you know, our governor and, and the CDC and our health administrators and all that um, say that contact sports can, reopen is pretty much you know so there's i mean to be honest there's not really much to the high athletic commission can do at this point their hands are kind of tied it's it's all on the basically the government and the state of ohio officials to when they're going to re, re uh, do contact sports again 
Okay, well then send your emails to the Ohio State government. <laughs> there you go. To DeWiner. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 send it to Mike DeWine. You know, I I don't see and, – and I'm trying to wrap this up and I, this pops into my head. I don't see why – it can't be pursued if the if the safety measures are put in place. Check them. I mean, when I go to the doctor, I have to be screened and checked for, you know, they'll, they'll check the temperature before I can even walk in the door. Why not do the same thing for contact sports? Right. Yep, I agree. I mean, you might have to cut down on the seating a little bit. But, you know, pro wrestlers want to work. Yeah, you know, they like say they're getting itchy. I mean, they're getting a well-deserved rest, but they're, uh, yeah, they're itching to get back at it. That's for sure. <laughs> well, and some of them are probably grateful for healing up mm-hmm. from injuries. Yeah. But I've seen a but couple the, posts on Facebook where they're saying that this this uh, COVID shutdown's been one of the best things for their bodies. That their bodies are feeling great. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> but the others, they're chomping at the bit. Including, uh, including my daughter, um, who just graduated from Cody Hawk's training camp, mm-hmm. and she's got no place to work. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I graduated. No, uh, now right. what? <laughs> Practice promos and do that. <laughs> right. Well, there you uh, go. <laughs> she, she, she's Thanks for listening. But anyway, make sure you follow us on all, all of our social media um, outlets. Facebook.com backslash Russell Horror. Instagram at home. Russell Horror. Yep, for sure. Twitter at Russell Horror. Uh, until next on time, I'm YouTube Meat Hook Jim along Russell with Donnie Horror Hoover. Channel. Also, and you can find we'll us at www.russellhorror.com. <laughs>